Good morning. Now, I know many people out there will not want to talk about this, not want to talk about this issue, but I, th I just feel like the current climate, there's so much to say. So I want to kind of divulge and spread the knowledge that I know. So firstly, what is racism? I'm going to talk about the effects of racism on mental health. Um, as a young black man, I can actually discuss this because gone through it. But I want to kind of divulge and tell people what racism actually is before going into it in depth. Now, racism is where a particular ethnicity, well, I'll say white people, um, feel that they are above or they have the power above other ethnic minorities. So they feel that black people are inferior. They feel Asian people and people of other ethnicities are inferior. It's just the way it is, okay? White people, we cannot be racist towards you. You are classed as the master race. We cannot, I repeat, we cannot be racist towards you. Asian people cannot be racist towards you. Chinese people cannot be racist towards you. It's just the way it is, right? You are seen as the superior race. That's why you victimise and pick on and attempt to bully black people. It's just the way it is. You don't see through history, oh, this black, this black person did such and such to this group of white people. It doesn't happen. You don't see this black person went and killed 300 white people over the fact that they ran very successful businesses. It just doesn't happen. So why does racism still exist? Racism still exists because we seem to have an elite group of white people who feel that it is okay to still victimize black people, to make them feel inferior, to make them feel as though they are less of a person or less of people because of the colour of their skin. That is as simple as it is. There are still the phrases being used, oh, who is that coloured person? Well, I'm a person of colour, my colour is black. That is the phrase you should be using towards me. Not coloured, I don't even like people of colour, I don't even like the word BAME, because let's be fair here, if someone is black, they're black. If someone is brown, they are brown. If someone is yellow, they are yellow. Just say the goddamn colour. It's that simple. Okay? But racism still exists because there are a group of people who still feel as though they are superior to others. That is why you had this happen. <laughs> Still exists because we are we as a as a I don't want to say as a as a whole a whole community. So you think of black culture, right? Unless you're an entertainer or a sports a sports person, I'll probably hazard a guess, and it is a guess, but I'd say more than fifty percent of black people are in in, part, in poverty. I'll say, I'll, I'll put my hand out and say, we live in deprived places. You look at all the deprived places in Peckham and Brixton, and you, well, I'll go back to Birmingham. You look at Handsworth, you look at Highgate, you look at all these places where black people live, or people are, need it again, or ethnic minorities live. And it won't be in the affluent houses, it won't be in big houses, it won't be in the affluent areas that are heavily business operated, it won't. It's just the way it is. 
because of the mindset that a lot of people are in and that is where they feel that they belong. And that is a mental health issue. And it's a mental health issue that is caused by racism. So personal experiences, I can talk about work, I can talk about social experiences. I'll start with social first because when I was growing up, I always felt very wary of the environment I was in. Now, I went to, my mum, in her amazing wisdom, bless her, sent me to a school in a very affluent area because I was very intelligent. So she sent me to a school in a very affluent area. So growing up, I grew up around majority white children. I, I, I understand that, I know what that's like. Social circumstances though, I would go and hang around with these people in Sutton Coalfield. As a 14 year old student, so a kid, I got chased out of Sutton Coalfield by uh, the National Front, the NF, skinheads, Doc Martins, the whole lot. I got chased for hanging around with my friends outside a news agent after school, I got chased, all right? First experience of racism. Second experience of racism was playing an all white football team. All right, I scored goals for fun. Played an all white football team, but I got racially abused on a football pitch. Nothing was done about it. As I grow older, I'm very wary of my surroundings. If I go to a pub, a bar, I, I still like to keep my back against the wall. I still keep my back against the bar because I need to see what is around me. I know the bartender's not going to hit me over the head, but I need to see what is around me. And that isn't a prejudice thing. That's because I'm still aware that people still are racist out there and still will hold a grudge because of that. Now... The impact of this is it does have an effect on your mental health. So work situations, for example, I know for a fact, for a fact that there are 5.7%, I'm in education, 5.7% of SLT members in this country are of a black, Asian or minority ethnic, 5.7%. Let that sit in your head, 5.7%. Every one of us knocks on the door. Every single one of us knocks on the door. There is only 5.7%. I know that of that 5.7%, 2.7% are head teachers. 2.7%. Let that sit there. But black, Asian, and minority children are everywhere, in every school, littered in every school. I know of a school that hasn't only hired one, one, let us sit there, one black or minority Asian teacher in 16 years. 16 years. And it happens. Now you tell me what the impact of that could be on someone's mental health. Well, they can suffer depression. Guilty. I've done it. The impact of, on, on my mental health in working in education for 17 years and seeing what I've seen has undoubtedly affected my mental health without a shadow of a doubt. In the BAME community, I'll say again, in the black community, we do suffer a lot with trauma because we are told by our parents we need to be careful. We need to, when we go out, we need to look after ourselves dress a certain way so we don't get stopped by the police, we don't get hassled, we don't get harassed. And within that community, there's a lot of psychosis. Now, as painful as that might seem, psychosis tends to lead to substance abuse. Now, everyone laughs about Jamaicans and the weed culture, but Smoking all sorts of different types of weed can lead to psychosis. Delusions of grandeur. And the focus gets taken away from that. So you look at the effect. Racism then leads to loneliness. Loneliness then leads to depression. Depression leads to substance abuse. Substance abuse leads to psychosis. And chances are most 
people don't get out of that. The inequalities in mental health can be profound, let's say that, profound. And for the last three decades, the research is there for you to see that help for black people isn't forthcoming. I'll say it again, we don't talk. We don't, like, I, I'll, I'll say it, as a black man, it took me a long time to talk to my, to my parents. It took me almost tw 21 years it took me to actually have a conversation with my parents about how I was feeling, how I dealt with the last 21 years, victimization, dealing with things at school, um, accusations, all sorts. Like the effects on my mental health. I, I, I never told my parents that I took depression not in 2013. Never told them. And in truth, I probably because of that, I probably suffered a long time before that as well. There's this fear that a lot of us will not be accepted. And I'll say again, if you walk down the street, we are feared. I don't understand why. We are feared. But we've done nothing wrong. Now, Whenever I jog down the street, I'm very wary of who I run and approach because, it, 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 like I said, anything can be said, anything can be, be done. Um, I was once running in Woking and a, an older white woman actually saw me and crossed the road. Crossed the road. I'm like, I'm literally running down the street, I'm dying. Like, I've just done 7K, I'm dying. I'm not going to trouble you. It's not worth it. Like, I'm not that kind of person. But even if I was that kind of person, that doesn't serve any purpose. I don't get where the fear is coming from. I, I genuinely don't. Like, we, we are supposed to be equal. We're all humans. We're supposed to be equal, but because of the colour of my skin, that makes me unequal. My biggest fear is the effect on black children. Now, we're always told as kids that we need to work twice as hard to be anywhere near as successful as, as a white child. We're always told that. We have to work harder. Because of their privilege, we won't get the same opportunities. Now you think if a black child is cast out at a very early age, all right? So you think in school, they get excluded, whatever age, whether it's six years old, 11 years old, 14 years old. The pathway for them tends to be, if they don't change their mantra and their mindset, tends to be crime in prison. Statistics show black people are more likely to be arrested, more likely to be stopped and searched, now you think of the knock-on effect of that on their mental health, and it's constant. As an educator, we need to do more. We need to do more to protect these children and their mental health. You look at the lockdown we've just been in, it must have been inside for the last three months. But who's doing something about children's mental health before that? Because in truth, we don't talk enough, we don't discuss things, we don't show people that there are other ways of working, of learning, of growing, of developing. We don't show these kids, the scientists, the artists, the poets, the authors, the engineers, that are from black culture. So what do we do? Like, because of these racial tendencies in schools where children that are black are more likely to be excluded, two or three times more likely to be excluded, and not be given the opportunities to be successful, to come back and have those opportunities to be successful. 
What's the next step? When I, a black child suffers with mental health issues at the age of six, on average, because of how they're treated, what's next? Racism is ugly. Unlearn that shit. It's ugly as fuck. Unlearn it. I don't care what your parents have taught you because they're not teaching the right things. We don't want to be superior. We just want to be equal. The poorer outcomes of, of, of these black children is going to be prevalent forever. So the unconscious bias that happens. So in school, some children are marked down because of their name, because of the colour of their skin. They're marked down and treated differently because of the colour of their skin. So the bias is already there. When those exam papers get marked by the examiners, they get marked higher because the, because the, the bias isn't there. It's not. Black women, more than anything, I feel your pain. But even I can't begin to say the impact or begin to understand the impact it has on you. When you see your children suffering, when you go into the workplace and you've got random people asking to touch your hair. Like it's disgusting. Like I don't go around saying, oh, can I touch your hair? I don't do that. We are different. Yes, I get that. But you aren't superior to me. You don't know what we've been through. You couldn't walk. Two steps in my shoes, you couldn't. Yet you can judge me because of the colour of my skin. That I'm not worthy because of the colour of my skin. That I deserve, deserve to be promoted because of the colour of my skin. Now you think, if I was white, I'd have that privilege. I'd go to that interview and feel like I had a fair chance. But instead, I have to sit there and debate whether or not I'm going to get an opportunity because of the colour of my skin. The black community is less likely to reach out. Black men, black women, black children. We're less likely to reach out. We're less likely to ask for help. And that is the true effect of mental health. If you cannot talk about it, you are going to struggle. The best thing we can all do as a community is reach out, support, love and care. Thank you for watching.